anyone heard of Gary V? No? Gary V is a, um, he's a motivational speaker. He, he speaks about networking, building your business, believing in yourself, and just going 100% all the time. And what he says, this quote relates a lot to real estate in the sense, staying low doesn't have an, an ROI, return on your investment. It's about building relationships, which is, <clears throat> which is extremely true in our business. <clears throat> For example, by meeting people, by being out on the streets, increasing the number of relationships that you have out there, that person might not, you might not see a direct relation on the bottom line from them. However, they build relationships with other people, refer them to you. So saying hello, building a relationship with someone doesn't necessarily have a direct correlation to your earnings, <clears throat> excuse me, but it does have a direct correlation to the relationships and the net that you cast as a realtor um, in the relationships and the and the, the outlets that you have. So I wanted to just throw that in there. Um, don't always think that your marketing or your efforts have a direct correlation to your bottom line. There is an everlasting footprint there. But today we are here to talk about digital magnets. Generating online leads through digital magnets and landing pages. Can anyone tell me what a digital magnet is? No? No? Okay. That's fine. That's why we're here. A digital magnet is something of value that you are using to entice a user to provide you their contact information. You're trying to magnetize them to your service, your website, your program in return for their contact information. Okay? And landing pages come into play because that's where we send them when they do click on a magnet. Okay? First off, big question. Why Facebook? Why do we put so much effort into learning what Facebook is, how we can leverage it, and the power that's behind it. Number of people, absolutely. If you look at the background of this, uh, of this slide, there's a whole bunch of different social media outlets on there. And the interesting statistic is that all of the other ones combined don't equal Facebook in monthly visitors. Okay, let me ask you a question. So far this morning, it's currently 10 a.m. Who's gone on Google and done a search? One, two, three. Oh, wow, four. Okay. Um, how many of you gone on Facebook this morning? Only one? Wow. That's crazy. I haven't gone on Google. I haven't asked my phone anything, but I have been on Facebook uh, three times since 6 a.m. <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea. Anyways, so the, the next uh, graphic here goes over some different age demographics and the total sites visited by unique visitors per month. This is not one person going on every day. This is individual people. I would only count once in a month. Everybody would only count once in a month. So there's different age demographics. The first one is 18 to 24. Is that our target market? No. Facebook's number two anyways. We'll still leave that in there. But YouTube is number one. YouTube has become more and more popular with the younger generations. Uh, the next one, ages 5 to 34. Number one, overwhelmingly, is Facebook. What is that age bracket, that 25 to 34? Who are they? Millennials. What is their, what's their market? What do we go after? What would we label them? Yes, they're millennials, but what are they? What are they to us? First time home buyers. Absolutely. So that's a big demographic for us. Next, 35 to 54. What's the first social media outlet on there? Facebook. Again, if you notice, the top three are all in order. Two out of those three relate to Facebook. Who are these people to us? What's this age demographic? Moving up, absolutely. Upsizing, getting into bigger homes. Um, at, the end of, at the tail end of that could be empty nesters, uh, downsizing, but those are buyers and sellers. That is prime transaction age demographic, okay? Age 55 plus, what's the top one there? Again, Facebook, so two out of three in the top. If you average all of these out, Facebook, way above the rest, even down to 18 to 24, you still have two of the top four as Facebook related programs or outlets. Uh, the age 55 plus, who are these people to us? Retirees, 55 plus, HOPA communities, empty nesters selling out their homes. Again, this is a big target market for us. And the interesting part is even in that demographic where you would not expect technology to have as much of a play into the decision, it still does. Okay, so why Facebook? Because that's where the people are. <clears throat> 
interesting stat. 62% of real estate professionals are not paying for advertising on Facebook. What are they doing on Facebook? Posting, organic postings, organic followings, looking at funny videos, grumpy cats, things like that. Um, they're not utilizing it for their business. And even if they are doing it, very few of them are doing it, and even less are doing it well. So you have that opportunity there. Just like what we said last year in 2016, 92% of home buyers either found the property or the realtor they worked with online, according to NAR. Would we rather have 92% of the market share or 8% of the market share? In here, would we rather be part of the 62% or part of the 38%? And even from the 38% that are using this, less competition, number one, but if you can do it well, if you can drive the traffic, you're that much more powerful, okay? And how many people have one source that they get leads from, not including referrals? Who's paying for leads generation somewhere? One, two, three? No, not yet, okay. Of the three that said yes, are you advertising in one source or multiple sources? Multiple, excellent. You need to diversify your efforts. Absolutely. So if you're only doing Realtor.com, for example, you need to diversify those efforts because your cost per lead is so high on there and it's far and few between, unless you're spending tons of money, um, that you need to sub, uh, subsidy that with a different source. And, and social media brings that for you. Social media, referrals, it all kind of revolves around each other. Okay. What do you need to get started to advertise on Facebook? Number one, Facebook account. Please don't raise your hand if you don't have one. Should not be the case. Number two, a business Facebook page. Everyone in here has their own Facebook account. So how many of you have a page dedicated to your business? Two, minority. We're less than, uh, less than 20%, less than 40% actually. So we need to make sure that you do have a business page. Otherwise, you will not be able to do any of this. It needs to correlate back to your business page. Next, an IDX website. If you have a business page, you have a Facebook account, you most likely already have an IDX website. If you don't, I'm going to give you a couple options, recommendations. And you must have landing pages in order to do this properly. If you do Facebook advertising and drive them to the homepage of your website, you wasted your money, take it out, throw it in the garbage. Well, a personal profile is not a business page. And it shouldn't be used as a business page because you do have limitations on that. So you have your personal profile, create the business page with the personal profile. What you post on your business page is completely business related. They do in one sense, okay? So you post the business related items on your business page and you wanna take those and share them onto your personal. The mentality behind that is you're driving your personal sphere of influence back to your business as opposed to them just knowing that you work doing real estate, that you're a realtor, that you can help them. Yes, great, but that stuff on your personal is meant for your personal, and you don't want to add business contacts to your personal profile. Separate business professional, excuse me, business personal. No, keep the one profile and use a business page. The idea is to create followers, fans of your business, instead of friends on your Facebook account. Some agents do go a little bit further, build more of a relationship with some customers, which you can choose to add them to your personal profile, but you want to promote your business page. Reason behind that. Think about a relationship, a personal relationship that you have. Let's say you go to an auto mechanic and you have a great relationship with this auto mechanic. You're a friend for 20 years. You see everything that they do. You've always been going to them. You would be more inclined, or excuse me, he would be more inclined to give you a discount than someone brand new off the street. So Facebook has a similar mentality, but they have algorithms that calculate that automatically. The more followers you have, the more interaction you have with your business page, the more postings that you have on your business page, the lower your cost per click on your advertisements from that business page. Facebook understands the more the public, the more they think the public wants to hear from you, the less they're going to charge you because they want you to advertise. They want you to be in front of the customers because that's what they want to see. An advertiser who's brand new off the street just created a Facebook business page, their cost per click is going to be higher than someone who's established, has a following, has been doing advertisements, has been throwing budgets in there. Okay? 
So yes, you do want to create the business page and push your personal friends to that as well and not overload them on the personal side with business stuff. Okay. Landing pages. Most IDX websites can create landing pages. Um, it's a matter of understanding how you can do that. We'll go over a few of those in a minute. And then of course you generate a lead. They have to go into some type of contact management program, some type of CRM could be tied into your IDX website, could be completely standalone. Please don't tell me it's your iPhone address book. Okay. Find a source where you can utilize all this information together to automate some of your efforts. First off, IDX websites, um, several, several options. You have some that are included with your local board of realtors memberships. NAR offers a free placer site, which is not the ideal situation. These are not in any particular order. Um, the K company offers two different websites through us. There's an upgraded placer version, which is a slight uptick from the NAR free one. Does allow you to create landing pages, but not so customizable. Not my favorite. The next one is the K Company discounted program at iHouse Web, which is my favorite solution on here because of the ease. Um, it has the ability to create custom landing pages and they create it for you. So that's one utilization that you can use. There are many, many other IDX service providers like Website Box, Market Leader. There's tons of them out there. So it's a matter of picking the one that fits what you need to do. Um, and then last but not least, the custom WordPress website with an IDX feed. That is the creme de la creme. It is Cadillac of the websites. It is your personal ownership. It does cost a lot more to create and maintain because you do need to maintain it yourself. But everything is changeable. You own it. It goes where you go. You tell it what you want it to do. That is the end all be all. Uh, it does take much more techno technology experience or technical awareness to maintain that though. Um, so you do want to consider that. You have an idea, a uh, WordPress site? Yeah. I'm just not sure how to handle it. So you'll, you'll like one of the services. I'll point it out to you in a minute when we get to that slide. But it is a website where you can get people to do the work for you. Not at a, not at a premium either. So hang on, to, hang on to that one. Okay, landing pages. Um, as I mentioned, some of the websites that you already have have the ability to create them. iHouse Web, I did mention, has them. Playster has them, but they are super limited. Custom WordPress pages, you can create whatever you want. So of course that's able, you're able to do that. Now these six on the right are my recommendations for outside sources. If you do have an IDX website, but don't like how the landing pages are, are created, or you need a different source, or you don't have an IDX website, you still have the ability to capture these people without breaking the bank. So Lander app is one, Instapage, Lead Pages, Extensio, and Entra Pages are all services where you can create landing pages for free. So if your website doesn't have that capability, you can go to these websites, utilize one of them, create a landing page with a specific URL, and drive the traffic there to capture. Last one on the bottom, the Facebook contact forms. Even if you don't have a website, it's not the ideal way to do this, but Facebook has their own landing pages, so to speak, where if someone clicks on it, you can specify the information that you want, and it captures that information, but that does not go into a CRM for you. That only builds it together into one email notification to you and on the back end of your account, but doesn't allow you to do anything with that information. So that's not ideal, although it is a stopgap if you're creating a website or you haven't created the landing pages yet, it is something so that you can get started right away. Any questions about these landing pages yet? No? Okay, we're running right through these. Uh, what does a landing page consist of? What is a landing page? What's a landing page? Anyone? A keyword that could take you to your website? No, not necessarily. That's like a short code. Um, a landing page is a piece of paper we put on the ground that we jump onto when we are jumping off the ground to land on. I'm just kidding. It's not. Um, a landing page is a single non-scrolling website. It is a page. A single page that does not allow the consumer to do anything except what you want them to. I'll give you an example. These are examples of two landing pages. It's a little bit blurry, so stick with me here. On the left side, this is Vision Real Estate Investment Marketing. So what they have, they created advertisements on investment properties. This is an article about which Canadian city is the best one to, add, to invest in. So all they have is the exact message 
that they are trying to get across, a contact form on the right side, and that's it. A submit button for a call to action. That is absolutely it. So going back, a landing page is a simple message matching your advertisement that caused the person to click through, matching the magnet that caused the person to, like, to click through, a contact form to capture their information, and a call to action button to say go. That's it. Non-scrolling, doesn't move, they can't do anything except for read, yeah, that's what I clicked on. Okay, I do wanna see that, and give me your information. That's it, simple. Facebook has no control over these. These are all separate. So this is on Vision's website. This was on Explore, Explore Utah's website. That's all it was. These are outside of Facebook. So by clicking on the ad through Facebook, it took you to this landing page, one of these. This is for your website. The one on the right, I believe, was created through Instapage, one of the, uh, the services I provided on the previous page. It's very simple. All they did was put a picture of a house on Facebook and say, register to get a list of free foreclosures in your area. That's it. 35,000 contacts in the first month. This is a real estate company in Utah. 5,000 contacts in their first month. You know how much it cost them? About 3,000. Think about the cost per click on that. Very, very, very low. 3,000 for the 35,000 contacts. Correct, correct. Now, I'm encouraging you to go spend $3,000 on, on clicking click-throughs through Facebook. I'm not, but then again, you guys probably can't handle 35,000 contacts individually. What they didn't do was narrow it down far enough. So if you see, it just says foreclosures hit the market in Utah, the entire state. So they did not narrow in and hyper-localize their efforts, hyper-localize their demographics. In our sense, we'd probably say, be the first to know when foreclosures hit the market in Pompano Beach or in Fort Lauderdale or in Plantation. You know, picking a specific area and your demographic that you market to is specifically in that location. We'll go into that in a second and how close you can really specify your target audience. You can pick who you want to talk to. You can pick who you don't want to talk to. If there's a neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale you don't want to pay for people clicking on, if they're in that area, you can say exclude that area. You can pick exactly down to the IP address. It's super, super particular. Any questions the landing page has to have? From Facebook ad. One Facebook ad. They pay for it. We'll, we'll go into how to build that and how you're building your audience that you're going to. But they selected the type of people, the demographic people from age 20 to 40, for example, living in the state of Utah, interested in Trulia, Zillow, Redfin, real estate, or exhibiting behaviors likely to buy. Okay. So in, on Facebook, you have three columns, really. When you open Facebook, you have three columns. You're on your cell phone, you have one. Okay? When you're on your cell phone, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling. It appears in the middle, exactly where you would see a story from your friend saying, I went to the bathroom today. You know, the next one could be the image with the blurb saying, sign up here to get free foreclosures in Utah. In your news feed. In your news feed. Correct. It will pop up when you go into Facebook as a user. So that's, that's only on your cell phone, okay? On your computer, there's three columns. On the left side, you have your profile stuff, your events, your photos, stuff like that. In the middle, you have your news feed, which is one area as well the advertisement could appear. And just like Google on the right side, there's about three blocks as you go down the page. Those are also advertisements. You're only paying if somebody's clicking on it. There's two different ways to pay for the ads on Facebook. You can either do click, uh, cost per impression or cost per click. One of my biggest pet peeves about recommending Zillow in the previous history of previous years has been they promise you a number of times you'll appear on the page. And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for impressions as opposed to actual contacts, actual actions, which is why I say cost per click 
through Facebook, through Google, same exact thing. Bing networks, it's all cost per, as opposed to cost per impression. So if it appears and nobody clicks on it, didn't cost me a dime, I don't care. 35,000 people clicked on it. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. A sample of two more um, landing pages and how they were utilized. I wanted to show you the one on the right, which is a full page on their website. You have the full browser menu on the top, the search bar. Um, you have this really long form and then a bunch of distracting buttons. Horrible landing page. Horrible. This one on the right. Way too complex and way too many places for a browser or an individual user to go to outside of what you want them to do. A landing page is specific, accomplishing what you want, which is their contact information. Way too many fields, way too many options, horrible. The left side is another example of a perfect one. None of these buttons on the bottom were clickable. Pure information about what this company can provide for you. Exactly what they clicked on, what's your home really worth, get a true valuation, prepared by experts, no costs, fill in your information, hit submit accomplishes what they need. It's an example of a landing page. No, I would not. It's distracting from what your ultimate goal is. Would you rather sell someone a house or a pair of socks on Amazon? It's an example. I would not. I wouldn't want to put anything but what my ultimate goal is. This is purely for lead generation. And you can have 20 different landing pages. You can have 100 different landing pages geared towards the different efforts that you're putting forth. There's no limitation on that. In fact, when you're doing it on Facebook, you should have four or five different variations and see what works. The wording, bless you, the wording in your header, the wording on your picture, the house you picked as a picture of the, uh, uh, on the advertisement all has a bearing on what emotion you're invoking on the browser to click on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll get into creating the ads in a minute. Coming, coming, to, coming up to that. Any questions about landing pages yet? Awesome. Next, CRM system. Who does not have a CRM in here? No? Okay. You need to have one regardless. I, I saw your hand in the back. <laughs> um, there is one included with Playster, not the free version, only the upgraded one. Pretty limited. MailChimp is a strict email campaign um, CRM. It, it's really limited. It's only for emails. You can set yourself campaigns to add to, but it is pretty restricted. Top Producer has always been a very popular one. Um, WordPress has its own custom widget you can implement to your WordPress site for a CRM. There are dozens and dozens of them. No, through custom WordPress. Since you have a WordPress site, you can look into, if you Google WordPress CRM widget, You'll find a bunch and just pick the one that you like. The key is find one. Just find one and stick with it. Most of the systems have similar functions. Okay? It's a matter of finding one that you're going to stick to. Sure. Um, Lion Desk is 25 a month. Contactual is 39. Top producer is 45-ish, 40-ish. Can't recall. Um, Zoho, I believe, is free. Salesforce is expensive. Uh, Wise Agent is free. It was a recommended one that I heard from a realtor at a convention a couple weeks ago. I have not personally tried it. I'm currently using Line Desk personally. I just had a recommendation via the chat for I Exact I X A C T, thirty five dollars a month and six months free for new agents. Sounds pretty good. Key is finding one with the features that you're going to utilize. I like Lion Desk because it's doing follow-up via text message, video text message. It seems very personal. While you may be automatically texting them on their birthday or on your anniversary date from when you joined, your anniversary date of when you bought your house, anniversary date with the marriage, anything that you're putting in there, you can cater your text messages, your videos, your emails to go to those dates. And that's really across the board. Um, just find one that has the features that you're going to utilize and stick with it. And how that applies to digital magnets and leads generated through Facebook is you can cater your CRM to automatically add people that are added through this portal, 
through X portal into your CRM, they automatically go onto this list and they're automatically given a drip campaign, which starts off with the item they signed up for. If you're giving out an ebook, for example, thing of value. If you're giving away an ebook on things to remember when buying your first house, that first email on the drip can be the actual product itself with an intro message, followed up with a text message, followed up with a phone call, followed up with an email a week later, staying in front of these people. The point in generating these contacts is to maintain them and continue to feed off of that information. Any questions on CRMs? Awesome. We talked about this already, but what is a digital magnet? Simply put, a lead magnet is an offer that a prospective customer values enough to exchange his or her contact information for. Transaction usually takes place in the form of providing an email in exchange for a digital asset, such as a valuable PDF or ebook. The key is magnets must provide some type of value. You see this all the time. If you're browsing Facebook, Google, and you search for a wool sweater, because we need lots of wool sweaters in South Florida. You search for a wool sweater because you're going skiing. And then you go on Facebook. And what pops up in your newsfeed? An ad for $5 off wool sweaters. Oh, my God, how'd they know that? It's called retargeting. But the reason they put that there is a magnet, is to offer you something of value where they have an idea, they have a sense that you are looking for that. So they're trying to invoke your emotion of feeling that there's value by clicking on it. And that takes you to the website to buy the wool sweater. So in real estate, we can utilize retargeting. That's another class for another day that's really long. However, in this sense, what are we offering? Items of value, what can we offer? A guide, a home valuation. It's one of the number one ways to generate seller's leads. What is one of the most negative things that people will view in real estate? Matt, don't answer this one. What's the worst thing? If you had to pick one way that you absolutely had to, to generate seller's leads and you're just dying because you don't want to do it. Phone calls, cold calling, FISBOs, expireds. Couldn't pay me enough to do that. If that was the only way to generate leads, I'd probably be out of real estate. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> but that's the idea, is to get away from that and be able to provide something of value in a more efficient manner. Instead of sitting there and calling 50 people or 100 people, you can hit 100 people in 10 minutes on Facebook. Where what did it cost you? If you had 100 people and nobody clicked on it, it cost you nothing. If you have 100 people and two click on it, you probably spent like $3. Was it worth calling 100 people or spending $3? Depending on how long it took you to call 100 people. <laughs> but probably worth the $3. I'd, I'd pay 30. I don't care. I don't want to pick up the phone and talk to those people. <laughs> Let them contact me, tell me they want to be contacted, or to ask me for something, and then I will get in touch with them. Narrowing down my list. Some, go ahead. Absolutely. You set your budget. So you set the amount that you're paying for each click, and you also set how much you're spending. You can either set it by day, you can set it by total lifetime of the advertising campaign. So we'll go into that at the end, that's the last point. So examples of magnets, items of value that you can provide. Number one, we talked about a how-to guide. How to buy a house, how to get the most for your home, how to get your house ready to sell, how to buy your first home, how to move from renting to sell, to, to buying, how to get a mortgage, how to debunk the property inspection process, items of value, guides, guides. But Jonathan, I'm not a writer. How am I going to put all this together? It seems like a lot of work. It's called Google. Go on Google, search for what you're looking for. You're going to find it, read it, rebrand it, reword it, make it your own. I was searching last week on different guides. I wanted to find one that we could utilize, rebrand. I ended up finding one that allows you to download their book, customize and personalize a cover, and make it your own. I think it was $10. Just Google. Google and find it. It's very, very simple. Another way, if you have the content, let's say you have some blog articles that you've written in the past, or you find some articles, who gets the emails from Florida Realtors every day? Get one every single day. If you don't, they have your email address wrong. 
Uh, you get one every single day with articles that are pertinent to buyers, people interested in buying, people interested in selling, how the interest rates are changing, what the government's modifying on flood insurance that affects people. Take that information, make it into a how-to, make it into a blog article. They don't even have to be complete eBooks for you to utilize them as magnets. Take a single blog article and you can make an advertisement based on that. 10 best decorating tips for 2017. It's not going to really generate you the leads that you want, but that's the idea. It's a single blog article with 10 items that you got from somewhere else, you made it your own, and you put advertisements out there. Next, white, sorry. Depends. If you read it, you rewrite it on your own? No. If you just copy paste and put yes. Um, my high school teacher will tell you yes. <laughs> sorry, Kessler. You have to make it your own. You can't just copy paste it. You can take their information, replace it, and at the bottom, asterisk courtesy of multiple listing service. Like anything else, you have to you have to cite your source if you're using that exactly. Next, white papers or reports. Instead of a home valuation for a seller, how about a market report in 33060? A market report. See what's selling in your area. Cheat sheets, prepping to sell, resource lists, um, approved vendors, approved plumbers, recommended service providers. I probably wouldn't use that one. Video training, that's an interesting one. Has anyone ever thought about giving home buyer courses? No? Yes? Yes? It's a great idea. It's hard to get people to show up, though. So get people to show up digitally. Record it once. If you want to use a camera, come in. You can use my camera. It's, it's geared towards creating trainings and guides and walkthroughs. Create a, create a home buying experience, a guide to step-by-step -step through the home process, the home buying process, and capture information in order for them to watch the video. Discount codes or free shipping. This is specifically for e-commerce, but how does it apply to real estate? Discount codes or free shipping. How can that apply to real estate? Buyer rebate. Buy your rebate. Save $1,000 when you buy your first home with me. I'm sorry? Exactly, right? <laughs> um, I got a great one for you. December 5th, clear your calendar, first off. December 5th, 12 to 1.30. Be in this office. We have a big announcement, and you're going to laugh really hard. That's all I can tell you. December 5th, 12 to 1.30. Discount codes and free shipping. Get a free appraisal when you buy a house with me. Free appraisal when you buy a house with me. Pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. December 5th, be there. Survey results. Not really anything I could think to apply that to real estate. Assessment or test results, same thing. Sales material or pricing. That goes back to coupon codes, I believe. Free trial, freeware, software, it doesn't really These are some ideas. So here's our ideas on how they apply to real estate. Something of value, keep that in mind. Let's say we offer a free list of open houses scheduled for this weekend. Open houses this weekend in Pompano Beach. Somebody buying a house might want to gra grab that. It may not be a big generator, but the contacts that you're going to get are people that are genuinely interested in buying a house. Otherwise, they're wasting their time. And you only pay for someone when they click on it. So what's the harm in putting it out there? Free home valuations. We talked about that, generating sellers leads. Free home valuations for blank sellers, for Pompano Beach sellers, for plantation sellers, for Fort Lauderdale, for Miami, wherever you want to specify your target. The idea is create five of them, create six of them. Create one that's catered to Coconut Creek, one that's catered to Coral Springs, Boca, Delray, Pompano, Lighthouse Point, and you can specify those, those boundaries that you're paying for. So you're only hitting people in Pompano Beach when you write Pompano Beach. Buyer's guides, 10 things to remember when buying your first home, for example. Seller's guide, how to get the most money for your home when you sell. Items of value, guides, items of value. Renting versus buying, can you still afford to rent? Buying might be cheaper. 
That's going back to that lower age demographic, hitting the 25 to 34, those first time home buyers. Rebates and certificates, save $1,000 when buying your first home. Register for a free appraisal for your home purchase. Rebates, certificates, things of value. If you saw when you were buying your first house, save $1,000 when you buy your first home, would you have clicked on it? I would have, that's for sure. Any little penny counts when you're buying your first house. Easy home search offer. See the newest homes for sale under 300,000 in blank city. Fill it in, hit what the average home sells for. Drag that to a search feature, which is an automatic notification from your website. All items of value that could be perceived as value to a buyer or a seller in exchange for their information. Any questions about those? These are landing pages that I will cater a message to in the end, and they're also going to be the ad that drives the traffic to the landing page. So step one is creating the ad. Well, step one is creating the Facebook business page. Step two is creating the ad. Okay. Step three is creating the landing page that the people who click on the ad will go to. Step four is advertising that through Facebook's demographics, Facebook's ad manager. If you it sounds like it's a lot, but if you go in there, it's really, really simple. Create the image, create the page, put them together. Okay. If you're doing something of value like a guide, a buyer's guide, a seller's guide, you do need to create that ahead of time as well or find it. Okay. Here's an idea. Here is an example of one advertisement. And everything that you're going to see in the next few slides, I created less than five minutes on Canva Designer. C-A-N-V-A Designer. I'll show you the logo shortly. But here's an example. Thinking of selling, what's your home worth? Has your website on it, your name, realtor, and a simple picture. Very simple, very straightforward. I'd probably add a city name on that, or I may include it in the text of the advertisement itself. And here's where my image would go. Right inside that ad, headline at the bottom, what's your home worth? Description of what it is. Click here to find out how much your home is worth. And a button, call to action. Super simple. All I did was grab an image, put some text on top of it. I did that all in Canva Designer. That's a template, default. I didn't create it. It was there for me. I just had to change uh, from the names that were in there into defaults. Literally less than five minutes. Two more I created. On the right side, free guide, register now. 10 things to remember when buying your first home. Looks pretty professional. Must say so myself. Left side, open houses, register to get this week's list. Again, super simple, less than five minutes. You don't have to be a graphic designer to create this stuff. There's so many programs out there that help you do this, drag and drop, click and change. What's up, Kessler? Number one is Facebook business page. Number two, create an image. Number three, create a landing page. Four, put it together. Okay, any questions on these? Super simple. I grabbed that picture for free. I had the design for free. I didn't like the picture behind it. Drop that picture in, boom, ready to go. The one place you cannot get your images from is Google. Don't just Google it and grab that. If you are going to Google it, you need to drop down your advanced filters and select that there's no license restriction on it. Otherwise you're grabbing like a Shutterstock image or something you don't have the legal right to use. I'm going to give you a few resources where to get free stock photos. Here's a few more. See, I grabbed a non-free image on the left on this one. Want to save $1,000 when buying a new home? Call Janet. Buyers get $1,000 back at closing when buying through the K Company Realty and Janet Pinkett Pickett's team. Basic branding, basic information. Click through to get your rebate. On the right side, renting versus buying. You can't afford to keep renting. Register for five programs that could help you buy sooner all attractive to the target market that we're trying to go for. Created on Canva, created on Canva. Very easy, very simple. How can you create these advertisements? These are the programs you can use. Canva is the one I utilize primarily in creating those ads that we just looked at. The one in the middle is an interesting one. It's a variable. And Elizabeth, this is where I was going to tell you to go. You go to Fiverr. Fiverr is an open source 
freelancing system where you can get anyone from a video testimonial, a voice over, uh, voice over recording, WordPress management for your website, addition of landing pages, creation of landing pages, creation of graphics. You can get someone to digitally stage your home in there. It's a very interesting um, service and website. And it's called Fiverr because everything is five bucks. Everything's five bucks for the most part. I mean, there's additional services with upcharges. You can create one of those uh, sketch videos, you know, the drawing, the hand drawing videos, about $25, $30 on there. Okay, Fiverr is absolutely ridiculous. We just got a comment that Fiverr is amazing. And I completely agree. Fiverr is absolutely ridiculous. I utilize it very frequently. If you've heard our voiceover on our telephone system, it's from Fiverr. It was 10 bucks though. PicMonkey is another one. It's very similar to Canva. It's a drag and drop default templates, drop your picture in, create your ad. Pixlr on the bottom is similar. In my opinion, Canva is the big one. It is the easy to use. You can use that for creating marketing materials, listing flyers, for open houses, for mailers, for door hangers. They have everything under the sun in there. And I'm trying to figure out a way to put that inside our website. I love Canva. Any questions on those? Any other recommendations? Not all of them. They give you a bunch of teasers, <laughs> which you can use for free. And most of them, if you have to pay for it, are a dollar. I tried and they didn't answer me. Canva, I tried. Yeah. Um, I also scoured the code on Canva's website to find the portal that they use to, use to work. And it's a company based out in, based in Poland, I think, that does the framework. I, I just went into it to try and figure it out. It, it, it didn't go very well. Um, but there are services that can do that. There's a couple companies that have builders like that, although they're super antiquated, and I wouldn't even want to use it if I could. Um, we're going to figure one out, though. I love Canva. Okay? Pictures. Free places to get pictures. Unsplash.com. Pexels.com, Pixabay.com. These are all stock images with no licensing requirements. Use them as you wish. And they have everything from a picture of a dog's nose, through houses, through decorating, through families. This picture right here with the moving boxes I got from Unsplash. This one on the right here with the condo and the decorating the bottom right I got from Pixabay. Very, very easy. Go on there, type a keyword, grab a picture. High resolution download to your computer. Sweet. About half a million royalty free photos from Photofy app. See, another one, Photofy, P-H-O-T-O-F-Y. There's all different types, all different sources. There's definitely more than these, but these are very popular ones. But who are we going to market to? Who can we market to on Facebook? We've created our ads. We're trying to capture these people. We're thinking about our marketing message, our, our magnet that we're going to grab these people. We're going to hold on to them, and we're going to get them to register on our website. There's two different categories that we can really drop people into. And this is where retargeting comes into play. Your own database is one section that you can market to. That's people that you already have. Bringing them back to you. With CRM, you have a contact list. And there's a few agents with about 5,000 contacts in their CRM, but they're not really sure, how can I reach back out? It's been so long. I haven't been staying in front of them. You can drop that list of emails into your Facebook where you're creating ads. You can create just a plain branding ad. Looking to buy or sell? Know someone who is? Call Elizabeth Littleton. Branding. Contact page. And you're going to market that to your own, your own database, your old contacts bringing them back to you, bringing them back. Keep your bid very low because you already have a relationship with them. What you'll do in Facebook is click create your own audience and upload that contact list into there. Any matching email or any matching phone number that's on a Facebook account, it will appear as an ad for them. Pretty neat. The next one is creating face, using Facebook's data to create your market audience, which are new contacts, people you don't know already. You don't have a relationship. 
but are in a demographic that you specify when you're creating your ad. How can we limit those? Creating a Facebook audience are broken down into four major categories. Demographics, location, interests, behaviors. There's others like job title, business page they are, they're tied to, okay? Demographics include age, limiting by age, average income, net worth, gender, ethnicity, language, active military or not, veterans, separated, divorced, marital status, all of that. It's crazy intrusive. But that's Facebook. Facebook is the master of all data. You thought Google was bad. Facebook is worse. If you ever see a program or something that you can click on that says, log in with Facebook, sign up with Facebook, don't click the button. Don't do it. They know everything about you. Everything including when you last posted that you went to the bathroom. They know everything. Don't ever click that. But that's where you get your data from, is by people clicking on things that says sign up with Facebook, log in with Facebook, which you can actually do on your landing pages as well for those people who are so foolish to click that. But don't, please don't do it yourself. One of those privacy people. Um, demographics. So someone is a veteran. My ad is, my magnet, my ad is created to all about VA loans. That is definitely something that I'm going to cater to. Definitely a demographic that I would select. Gender. Let's say you picked an advertisement of a woman with her family cooking or in the house decorating. Would you cater that more to a man or a woman? Probably a woman. Something they can relate to. A picture of a guy with a moving box, you're probably going to relate to the man. Maybe the woman, actually. It's a nice honey-do list. Um, income, net worth. If you're advertising luxury portfolios, luxury property listings, off-market luxury properties, you're going to want to select an income and a net worth that's higher up. Okay? Age. Limit your restrict on age. If you're going after first-time home buyers, don't be marketing to 45 to 65-year-olds. Let, narrow it down to who you're going after, wh who your marketing message really interests. Location, include zip codes and excluding zip codes. Radius from a specific city, radius from a specific address. Let's say you're doing an open house at 123 Main Street. I'll invite people within 15 miles of 123 Main Street. You can specifically cater to people using a device or a computer within 15 miles of that property crazy you can knock on 100 doors or you can put an ad on facebook crazy people traveling in a location so someone who may be down here in new york on vacation let's say if you include this area that they're vacationing in as your demographic your location they're going to see that ad when they're on facebook on vacation but not when they go home only while they're down here so you're hitting them while they're in the position to take advantage of your service. Interest. These are the most common ones, I would say, in Facebook advertising. Someone that likes Zillow, someone that likes Trulia, someone that likes Redfin, someone likes Realtor.com. But remember, if you go on a website and then you go on Facebook, you see the stuff that you were searching because Facebook is watching you the entire time. The entire time. It is crazy scary. So if you went on Redfin and you searched for a house, you go on Facebook, if somebody clicked, advertise to people with interests or browsing histories with Redfin, your ad's gonna pop up for them, depending on your bidding, but you have a chance to come up for them. For sale by owner, if someone lists that they have a property for sale by owner, you can cater to them. If someone follows or likes or has done a search, there's an app called Real Estate Agent Directory on Facebook also would appear for them. Narrowing down people with interests and following and behaviors related to real estate activity. Behaviors, it's an interesting one. Again, super intrusive. Likely to move. What have they been doing online? Have they been searching in movers? Did they look up a mover's phone number? These are all behaviors that Facebook is tracking. Facebook and Google formed a partnership with data. Anything you do on Google, Facebook knows. Anything you do on Facebook, Google knows. It is scary. Recent mortgage borrower. If someone had made an application for mortgage, it hit their credit, 
that information is relayed and that's put into Facebook. Facebook knows. First time home buyer exhibiting relate, uh, behaviors relative to a first time home buyer. If they're out and they're searching home, uh, home loan rates, for example, or if they're searching FHA articles, Facebook knows. Google knows. Visiting from out of town, somebody posted on their Facebook, vacation, keyword, vacation, Florida, South Florida, the beach, trip, picking up all of these keywords and plugging them into the algorithms that Facebook and Google have. Recently married, they might be moving. Recently engaged, they're going to be moving. Any other question? No? Okay. All right, these are all behaviors that you can cater your marketing message to. First time home buyers, think about what position they would be in. And you don't have to think of these all from scratch. When you go in, yes, Facebook is a stalker. When you, when you go into Facebook, it gives you the different options of what you want to add, okay? For example, recruiting. Who do we go after with our Facebook ads? Someone who likes or has a job title like realtor, realtor associate, sales associate. We're only paying for people who are licensed to click on our ads, things like that. You, it's, it's scary intrusive. But it's so much work and it's got to be expensive, right? Got to be expensive. What would you say the line is if you're not going to spend, if you're going to go in and advertise with a Realtor.com or a Zillow, what is that line that you have to spend before it becomes relevant? What would you say? Is that $100 a month, $200 a month, $300 a month, $500 a month? What is that line where if you're going to do it, you have to spend minimum X amount? What is that on Realtor or Zillow? Yeah, to make yourself relevant, to generate business. How much do you have to spend? 500, 600? Something like that? 1,000 to 1,200? Well, I hope you're seeing production if you're spending $1,000 a month. My normal line that I recommend for a first-time person advertising on Realtor or Zillow is 250 to $300. Get yourself started. My total marketing budget, even if I'm humming along, just going along, I'm just turning and burning on Facebook, would never, ever be more than 500, ever. Starting off, I would say 100. Start off, generate some contacts, make sure that your systems are set up correctly before you invest more. The more you tweak and customize your, your, your ad campaigns to hit the target demographic, the less you're going to spend and the more productive it's going to be. Clicks can be as low as 70 cents a click, 70 cents. When's the last time you paid 70 cents for a phone call with somebody from Realtor? Never, probably pay $75 minimum for that single person. If you're advertising in a more luxury market, you may be paying $225 for one call, for one incoming customer, which could be a Realtor that called in on a listing. So initial budget to start off. I would say start with $5 a day, $10 a day. Limit your budget, give it a try, keep tweaking it. Okay, initially starting off, you're going to have to go on there every single day, every single day. So how do you pay for it? We talked about cost per click versus cost per impression. I would always do cost per click. Always, always, always. Cost per impression is lower, but it doesn't guarantee you a contact. Set yourself a plan to check back every single day to change your daily budget. Not necessarily your daily spend but your daily spend per click. The reason I say that, when you're creating your advertisement and you're limiting your budget, you can select either to manually create your bid or allow Facebook to manage it and click automatically and set it automatically to reach your goals. My recommendation is click that Facebook should set it and look, when you click for Facebook to do it, it will tell you what Facebook is bidding. Go back in there. Set it manually for one cent more. Elaborate. I'm sorry? Elaborate? Okay, so when you set your budget, your, daily, your bid per click, you can say, okay, Facebook automatically take care of that for me. Facebook will say, okay, in order to generate X amount of clicks per day, this person has to spend 72 cents per click. So Facebook will automatically bid 72 cents at every time somebody matches your specifications of who you're going after. Okay? And when they click on it, you're paying 72 cents. 
read that 72 cents, go back in, change it from automatic to manual, and make it 73 cents. Your actual production, your actual clicks will go much, much higher, much higher. The reach won't change much, so it's still going to appear the same people, but you will appear more often than someone else using the automatic bid at 72, all for one penny. Okay. Any questions? I didn't go through and actually generate an ad because I feel using Canva or using Photoshop, if you have a graphic design background, is very, very easy and straightforward. Very, very easy. Okay, You're all in here because you have a strong belief that you can manage your own business, that you can generate your contacts, manage your relationships, and convert that into transactions, which is the right way to think in real estate. Okay, You're not looking for a broker or a company to try and spoon feed you leads because it's not a sustainable business model. If we generated leads, we gave them to you, great. You go out and try and close that lead. Come back and say, Jonathan, where's my next one? What happened if we closed our doors? What happened if we no longer existed, God forbid? What happened if the lead generation went away? Something changed in the marketplace, and the company can no longer generate leads. You guys are lost. Your career is gone. You're dependent on someone else. The idea is to build a business, build a network of individuals that use you and refer people back to you. I always say this, the top 2% of realtors in the country do nothing for marketing, zero. They sit there and wait for the phone because they've built a network of individuals that swear by them and refer business. There's an old saying, not, not really a saying, but there's an old mentality in the sales field. My mother worked in sales for 40 something years and she passed it on to me. An unsatisfied customer will dissuade five people from working with you. A satisfied customer might come back but a raving fan of your business will come back to you forever and bring five people with them. So the idea is to create raving fans of our business, to increase that net that we cast, increase our network, okay? This is my favorite saying, is you know, the, old, the old adage, give a man a fish, he'll eat for the day, teach a man a fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. This is my real estate version of it. Oh, it didn't show up well. Essentially it is, give a realtor a lead, they might close the deal, Teach a realtor to generate their own leads, they'll have a career. Find your marketing niche, create your way to generate leads. Okay? Questions? Okay. I bet you the contacts weren't what you were looking for. were but it shouldn't be a numbers game that's the, that's the wrong way to think about it okay if it's a numbers game and you're calling people and it's not what you were looking for or they're not responding you weren't creating the right message okay your actual conversion rate on an online lead this industry standard is 1.5 percent okay the big producing lead generation programs will say oh we're double the industry average great that's only three percent maybe four it's terrible. That's a lot of contacts. That's a lot of waste. But they're sending out such a wide net. Homes for sale in Pompano Beach. Such a wide net. You catering your magnet much more detailed into exactly the type of person you're trying to find. Okay? And setting them up on that campaign catered to exactly what they looked at, exactly what interested them to reach out to you, is going to provide you a higher return on at least the relationships. At least. Whether they use you now or they use you in a year. Being that resource to them is going to bring them back. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No. You can you can limit that to when you want to when you want to have your ad going out. Absolutely. The weekend is like three times the traffic and the time spent on the actual app itself. That's how sad we are. Um, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 100%. I would say from Thursday night, yeah. Um, absolutely, hands down. Monday through Wednesday, probably take it off. But then again, if nobody's clicking it, it doesn't really cost you anything anyways. So I'd still probably set it up across and, and see where I'm going to get. Modify, go back in, modify my ad settings, change when I'm showing, change when I'm not, increase my bid in certain times, decrease my bid in other times. And it's not constant maintenance of that. Okay, you can set it for an auto schedule, set it, forget it. Go back in, once you have it set to a simple science, go back in once a week, check on your ads. This one's performing, that one's not. What's the difference? Is it a picture? 
Is it the heading, the title, the area? What do you need to tweak? I promise you, you're going to generate contacts through this. I promise. Any other questions? Question was, if you had to start spending in one place, where would you do it? Depends on my budget. If I can only afford $100 a month, I'm probably going to go, go towards Facebook. If I can swing two to 300, I'd probably start with Realtor, personally. Um, but you know, just because a lead doesn't close in a certain, from a certain source, for example, I know Realtor.com has been very successful for some people, but it's been very unsuccessful for others. And it has a lot to do with their personality. Someone is not as good at picking up the phone initially and creating that relationship in two minutes on the phone as opposed to someone else who might be better just meeting people out in the street. Different sources work for different people. That's what I'll say. Um, I believe Realtor.com gives you the best chance to convert from day one, but you'll find out really quickly if that matches your personality or not. Very, very quickly. I think the more outgoing, personable, almost aggressive individuals do better with Zillow, truly a realtor, um, including social media, actually. And the more passive need that personal relationship before they feel comfortable enough to be out there. You know what I mean? So if I had two to 300, I'm going realtor. Anything less, I'm going to go through social media. If I have more, I'm going to diversify and go into two different sections right away. Realtors have said it and forget it. All you have to do is pay them and then wait for the contacts to come in. But social media is going to take some time, some maintenance. It can generate from day one, but you do need to take some time in setting it up. Yes, sir? To set up the business page on Facebook? Um, I wasn't planning on it. It's a pretty basic, pretty basic. I would go on, uh, I'd go on YouTube and type how to create a business page on Facebook. And it's going to be like a seven minute video. It's really, really quick and easy. Okay. Um, I can do another one on creating the ad itself, like utilizing Canva, for example, creating the ad itself and um, creating a landing page, same thing. But it's, it's different for everyone. Creating the ad, everyone can do the same way, but creating the landing page has to do with your website how you're going to create them. If you're going to use Instapage, lead bounce, unbounce, things like that, or if you're going to use an IDX website you already have, like a market leader, a place or things like that. Okay. What I would tell you is I'm not going to do one on landing pages because it's very, it, it's very open and depends on each individual person. I will do one on creating the ad itself, which is really, really quick. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that at the beginning of the mechanics of a transaction class this month, which is sometime this month. <laughs> it's towards the end of the month. I think it's the uh, the last week, so next week, probably Wednesday, would be mechanics of a transaction. I will do that as the first 15 minutes or so, because that's all about I really all I really need to do ad creation. And if you can't make it, you can't make it. I'll record it and I'll put it on the website. Any other questions? No? Thanks for coming, guys.